Hiding places for your frog. Hello, where are you going? Hey guys, it's Lou. Welcome back to my channel. I am wearing the same thing as I was last week and that's because I'm starting school this week. So I filmed all the videos in the same day to make sure that I don't get overwhelmed with school and videos and all of that. I'm here to talk to you guys today about tomato frogs. Um, this is not a tomato frog. <laughs> this is my beard, Dragon Puff. She is just here for the video because she wants to hang out. Hope that's okay with you guys. But it has been a minute since I have made any sort of educational video. I want to preface this video by saying if you do things differently please feel free to leave that down in the comments I learn as much from you guys as you do from me so I am always open for a discussion and I think I'm just going to get into it because I'm really excited to do this tomato frog care guide I do have some notes on my phone just all about their care people always get concerned if I'm looking down on my phone if I'm just reading from a care guide on the internet but nope this is all of my research I have on tomato frogs and I'm going to try my best to summarize it here for you guys. Because I am summarizing their care, please don't just look at me as your source of research. You should always be going to multiple sources, not just one, to make sure that you are fully prepared for taking in your reptile, amphibian, dog, cat, whatever. With that being said, let's get started. Tomato frogs come from Madagascar. I have some interesting facts about them here as well because they are very interesting creatures. When threatened, they do puff up their body to make them look bigger and in my opinion when they do that, that's when they really look like a tomato. If they still feel threatened after that, they can actually secrete a white substance which is toxic. To humans, it's not so so bad. It can cause some swelling though so make sure that you don't get any of that on you. And if you do, wash your hands really well afterwards. They are nocturnal which means that your feedings and all of that should be done at night and overall they're pretty easy to care for in my opinion. I would definitely say that if you want to get into amphibians this is a great place to start. They typically live six to ten years and in captivity they average at around six years but be prepared that they can live longer than that. Males typically stay under three inches averaging between two and two and a half inches whereas females are a little bit larger. They definitely stay under five inches and they average at about four inches. I have a female, her name is Ketchup, and I think she's fully grown now. She's quite large. One question I get a lot about tomato frogs is can you handle them? And the answer is yes, but also no. When it comes to amphibians, you really don't want to handle them. They take in the oils from your skin, which can be pretty dangerous for them. And overall, they just don't appreciate handling. It stresses them out. So if you are going to be handling the only times you really should be doing it is when you are doing a cage cleaning or if you take them out to be fed or if you are doing a health check. And when you are doing that, you want to make sure that your hands are clean and that they are also moist. <laughs> I hate that word. Moist with water to ensure their safety. I've also heard about possibly wearing gloves when you handle your tomato frogs. So please, if you have more information about that, leave that down below because I would love to know. When it comes to their actual enclosure, you want to make sure that you have at least a 10 gallon. That is the absolute minimum size for them. I recommend a little bit bigger. I do find that ketchup moves around quite a bit, even though they are typically the kind of animal that just sits and waits for for prey to come to them. I have ketchup in an 18 by 18 by 18 exoterra and that seems to work really really well for her but definitely 10 gallon is the minimum and if you are going to be adding more than one frog which is possible but I don't have a lot of information on that so I don't want to talk about that. I want to add an extra 10 gallons per frog or at least that's what I've heard. Substrate you want to make sure you have at least two inches. I put quite a bit more just to make sure that she has a 
enough space to burrow if she chooses to do so. Eco Earth works great with some moss mixed in. I know that Jessica's animal friends here on YouTube just did a video about her tomato frog enclosure and she has a really great mixed substrate so I'm going to leave a link to her video down below so you can go check that out. Pretty sure that you have a lot of hiding places for your frog. This could be in the form of logs, leaf litter, live or fake plants. I do want to say that if you are using live plants remember that they are a burrowing species. The best bet is to keep the plants in the pot. Make sure that you switch out the soil for your plants though just to make sure that it is safe for your frog. But keeping it in the pots will make sure that your frog isn't uprooting the plants or exposing the roots in any sort of way. Keep a high hygrometer? You guys, I don't know how to say that. Keep that as well as a thermometer in your cage. Monitor the temperature and humidity. They do need a pretty high humidity. So you want to make sure that you are misting your enclosure pretty often. They need anywhere between 65 to 80 percent humidity. And as for temperature, they do well anywhere between 65 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to make sure you are providing a shallow water dish for them to soak in. The water should be dechlorinated and you want to make sure that they are able to get out of the water and in pretty easily. The last thing I want to talk about is feeding your tomato frog. Your tomato frog is going to be an insectivore which means you are going to be feeding insects. My tomato frog really loves crickets. She's not too sure about worms quite yet but you can feed super worms, mealworms, hornworms, all of that. You want to make sure you're adding variety in their diet. Also make sure you are dusting your insects a few times a week with a calcium supplement just so that they are getting the calcium that they need. They don't really need any sort of UVB but it is always a plus if you are adding UVB to your animal enclosures. And honestly that's pretty much all I have to say about tomato frogs. I kind of just wanted to quickly go over the basics. If you have any specific questions about tomato frogs feel free to leave them down below and I will do a part two of this video. But that is pretty much it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that notification bell down below so you can get updates on when I post my next video. And if you want to keep updated on my life as well as my pets, all of my social media is always linked down below. And I will see you guys next week for another video.